Hello dear friends, today's video is a tiny bit unusual and I had to improvise a lot, but I hope you'll enjoy it and it will help you lots on your own artistic journey. If you know me from other social media than just YouTube, you may or may not have noticed that I prefer drawing on the computer and Photoshop or dr over drawing on paper, but I prefer painting and coloring with traditional media over painting on the computer. So what I do for elaborate illustrations is either I produce my line art entirely digitally or I scan pencil line art and then edit it in Photoshop. In any case, afterwards I go to a copy shop and have them print my line art on watercolor paper to color it. And here's what this video will be about. What I do with my line art before I print it on watercolor paper. As you may or may not know, I have a monthly ask box on my Patreon account where my supporters can ask me art-related questions. This month someone asked me for a good middle way for line art on watercolor paper between black thick comic style line art and low contrast pencil lines that almost vanish in the process of painting. I told the supporter that it would be easier to show this than to explain it in written words, at least uh, partly. So here's my very first video tutorial. This whole thing is super improvised because I know nothing about video editing, so please bear with me. If you hear clicking sounds, that's well me clicking on the trackpad of my laptop because I somehow have to open different files. And if you hear shuffling sounds, that's probably the paper because I had to print out my notes so I don't forget what I have to mention. So let's get started, shall we? First things first. As in all things art, there is not the one way how to prepare your line art for printing it on watercolor paper. It depends on what you want to achieve with your painting. Thick, black, clean line art is perfect for some things and it is horrible for others. The same thing goes for supple pencil line art, which is great for some things but horrible for others. So, what I'm gonna do is not give you one way how to do things, but showing you a few examples of what I did, and hopefully they will help you to find a good middle way for your line art, for your painting, on your own. You, in this case, means both my dear patron who asked the question, and all those people who might want to watch this video. So, let's look at example number one here. This is a scanned and edited pencil drawing which produces softer, more subtle outlines in the final painting. So let's look at this scan in detail. The nice thing about pencil lines is that they're so soft and the lines all naturally vary in intensity. So that instantly makes paintings with pencil line art look less cartoony. Just so you know, I always edit my pencil line arts before printing them. In Photoshop, but also in Clip Studio Paint, there's an option that lets you edit the values in an image. My Photoshop is in German, but it should be called Curves, so let's go into this. So in German it says Bild Korrekturen, so I suppose in um, English it must be, must be something like Image and Corrections or something like that, and there you have Curves. And you can change them, you can make it brighter or darker. So, uh, you saw what just happened, you can uh, turn it brighter or darker and you can basically um, play with the contrast, which is pretty nice, so that um, is what I usually do once I uh, um, have scanned a pencil drawing, I make these lines a little bit darker by using the curves, and I also kill some dirt and dust and erased lines by simply using uh, Photoshop's eraser and erase them properly. I also add a layer beneath my line and that is just plain white to properly see what I'm doing. So as you can see here, if I click that layer off, you only see very faint line art left. So it helps if you have a white layer underneath. By the way, if you have that file printed on paper, the printing service will handle the white layer underneath like a transparent layer, so don't worry. Add one, it will really help you when you clean your line art. And now let's look at the scan of the final painting, which is in a different window. Come here, please. Here we are. You will notice that the line art pops out really well in the lighter areas still, but it looks subtle in darker areas. I like that look, but if you want your line art to always pop out, 
or never. You can plan out the darker and lighter areas in the final painting ahead and then edit individual parts of your line art accordingly. And of course you have to make your line art much darker in general if your painting will be very dark overall or otherwise um, the lines will be covered by the paint and almost gone. Maybe that's what you want but if it isn't make sure to turn your line art darker. So see here in some parts it's still very much uh, well visible in other areas the line art is very subtle. Another thing you can do if you want it to be more subtle is color your line art. For example, violet very often works for many color schemes. So let's look at a different example. Please leave. Let's look at this cat and dog for example. The line art is yeah, some kind of reddish. When I got my print out of the line art I might, uh, made it even a little bit darker because I already knew that the cat and the dog would have pretty dark patches of fur. So what I did was again use the curves and make it a little bit darker even. See. That's what it looks like colored. So afterwards when I was done coloring I still covered some of the lines um, in Copic White to imitate individual strands of fur reflecting sunlight and to make it look even softer. See here with the doggo. I'll have you know that not every brand of white paint will cover your line art, but that's a different topic altogether. For the moment just accept that thick layers of Copic White will cover your line art. Use that to your advantage. If you want white paint that will only dull but not cover your line art, there's other paint for that as well. Also keep in mind that in some cases it might be much easier and also look better if you don't have line art in some places um, at all. It's okay if I like just um, cover some single strands of hair with white paint, but you might not want to cover large areas with white paint afterwards. You might want to leave the line art out of that altogether. I will also have you know that you can at least partly imitate the effects of soft pencil lines with digital drawing brushes as well. How well that imitation effect works will usually depend on how much of the line art will be left in your final painting. Let's look at examples for that as well. Come here, I want the piano. So, look at this line art here. Um, that is my little sister's grand piano and it, you know, this line art is completely digital. Not a single line was drawn on paper. I also traced it from a photo that I took of that piano because I hate drawing inanimate objects and I just didn't want to do it. And afterwards I just cleaned and finished um, that tracing by hand. So let's zoom in, you can see it. It's still very messy. Which you don't see afterwards because I printed it very large. And what you can also see here if you zoom in is that there's not a single speck of dust, no paper grain to be seen, no variation in color. It's perfectly black unless you color it um, something else. It's as clean as clean can because that's what digital lines do. But since these lines are so thin and large parts of a final painting are very dark that still blends in very well and doesn't look out of place and it doesn't look cartoony. Proof here that's a scan of the final painting. So if you zoom in you might still see that there's clean line art but it pretty much blends well with the paint. So there's not much difference between pencil lines and these thin digital lines in this painting. Same thing with Let's Return to Animals with another cat which I did. Look at this kitty here. This line art is digital as well. But the lines are very thin and some of them are even done with a pencil brush instead of Photoshop standard brushes. If you're interested in that brush, I mentioned it in my process video for this particular line art and put a link in the description. So please just go back to that video if you want to um, know more about that brush. For now let's stick to topic. 
um, the topic being Leonard and how to color it. And this Leonard almost vanishes in the final painting because the cat is black. Let me show you. Here's the cat in color. It's very black and the Leonard is almost gone. See? So, in, again, in this case, it doesn't make much of a difference uh, what I do with the line art, because in any case it's thin and almost vanishes. So, these are ways to make printed line art look less thick and cartoony if you want to use them for paintings. Now, however, you may have noticed that I, for one, like cartoons and comics. So, at one point, I actually did try out exactly that. What does thick, black, cartoony line art look like if I print it and color my line art in ink? Best way to find out is always giving it a try. So, let's go back to one of my earlier fan arts of everyone's favorite water baby from Tales of Hysteria. That line art is also digital, but it's thick and black and not at all subtle and very cartoony. Because, hey, the original game is a JRPG and it is as anime as anime can, and I never intended to change that completely. I mean, I do like to give poor, noseless anime characters proper noses and chins, but I didn't do anything about his Disney princess hips. So, anyway, um, you can see here that I have separate layers for the line art of Mikio himself and of the line art for the water splashes. So, the team and another line art just for the water. See? The, um, and that layer with just the water splashes is set to 50% opacity, so it looks great. You can do that in Photoshop and in Clip Studio Paint as well, and I suppose in every art program that supports layers. So, I can make it thicker and blacker again. But that's not how I used it. I set it to 50% um, opacity. Okay, so that what makes it look great. First, I colored this line art in Photoshop in simple cell shading and I deleted uh, the layer for the water completely when I did that. So that looked like this. Case you curious? See? No line art. I deleted that completely for the water. Water, please go away, so just you can see what it looks like without no line art, just digital paint if you want. Ta da! So, and that's what you can't do in traditional media. You can't just delete printer's ink. So, I printed that version with the water splash line art, splash line art layer set to 50% opacity. That makes it look much softer in the final painting. Let's look at that, because I actually did another version where I colored the same line art um, with ink on paper, and that looks like this. Open. Yeah. So, um, you can still see faint traces of that line art for the water, because I, I didn't really want to improvise um, the water completely. I wanted to have at least some kind of line art to tell me where the water will be and what its shape will look like. But it's, I didn't want it to be as thick and black as um, the rest of the line art either. So, I actually still prefer the cell shaded version of that line art because I think it fits even better, but it was still a super useful experience and I'm pretty sure someday I'll use it for something. So, you can see it makes so much of a difference how thick and black the line art is, or not thick and black. So, let's wrap all of this up. Think first about what effect you want to achieve. Comic? or traditional painterly fantasy style, something entirely different. Make your lines as thick or thin as you need to accordingly, and if there is much contrast in your painting, you might even want to make your line art differently thick or thin or dark or bright in different areas, depending on where the light will hit. You might also want to take into account whether the line traces something solid and clear-cut like a person's face, or something soft like splashes of water or the fur of a dog. You might also want to color your lines instead of leaving them grey. That's why the line art in many Disney movies, for example, and on the merchandise looks so soft, 
because the lines very often aren't black but colored. Finally, it doesn't matter whether you use pencil or pen and ink or whatever for traditional line art and edit it on your computer before printing, or you work entirely with digital line art to begin with. You can still make it work the way you want to if you print it on watercolor paper and color it traditionally. It might just take a few tries for you to find the right balance for your line art. But you'll get there, so keep trying. Play with the brushes on your computer like you would play with different kinds of pens and paper. Play with the layer settings too. I hope that will help and have fun coloring your line arts.